In just a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the six shooter. Just one of the many great stars brought to you Sundays on NBC. Every Sunday, hear Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy in The Marriage. Sir Lawrence Olivier on Theatre Royal. Lawrence Tibbet with the Golden Voices. Helen Hayes, Frederick March, Rex Harrison, and Lily Palmer on the NBC Star Playhouse. All of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the six shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long legged. His skin is sun dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the six shooter. Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment, and the National Broadcasting Company present James Stewart as the six shooter. A transcribed series of dramas based on the life of Britt Ponson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. Now, in just a moment, immediately following this important announcement, you'll hear Act One of The Six Shooter. Have you heard about the Joneses? They're going to Europe for six weeks. They'll start in England, then visit Holland, Belgium, France, and Italy. It'll be a wonderful trip, a lifelong dream come true. And someday, it can be your turn to do just as they did. Put your money where it will earn $4 for every $3 you invest. In United States savings bonds. Start planning today. United States savings bonds can take you to Europe, too. Now, Act One of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. Over 400 head in the macadam herd. 400 white faced Texas cattle, and only three of us to shove them along the trail to Abilene. But the macadam's boys had promised me a tenth of whatever the herd brought, so I signed on for the drive. And it looked like I was going to earn the money, too. There'd been a cloud burst the second night out. Now it sounded like we might be heading into some more bad weather. The sky was all black and purple, and the wind began blowing up little balloons of dust. The thunder made the steers restless. They still remember that first storm. They didn't like the idea of going through another one. All right, come on, now. Come on, cattle. Hi, cattle. Hi, cattle. I can see the rain now. It hadn't hit us yet. It's still a couple of miles ahead, but I can see it real plain. Streaking down across the sky like little silver lines on a great blackboard. In the canyon where we were, the sun was still shining. It gave me a sort of funny feeling. Rain and sunshine all at once. Sort of like being two places at the same time. Right, McAdams, he came pounding up from behind and reined up alongside of me and Scar. Oh, boy. What do you think, Britt? Well, if that wind don't change, we'll be getting wet inside of 15 minutes. Don't look like it'll change. No, pray not. And I guess we might as well keep on going. It'll be easier to handle if we're out of this canyon when the storm hits. Yeah. I'll ride up until north. Okay. Norm! Hey! Yes? Get the light out. Keep moving. Yes, sir. up for you. Do as I tell you. Stop beating. Okay, okay. Come on, move it. Norm will speed him up, Rich. I'm going back and see if there ain't no stragglers. Uh, want me to give Norm a hand? No, no, I can handle it himself. It's about time he learned how. All right, you're the boss. Yeah. Just uh, keep an eye on him, Rich. Sure, sure. That lightning had hit a pine tree about 50 yards up the side of the canyon. And when it toppled over, it started a couple of boulders rolling down the side of the ravine toward us. That was all the cattle needed to set them off. One of the longhorns took a look at the rock and let out a ball that told the other animals to get out of his way. Hey, stop them, Norm! Stop them before they stand here! Life circled around and galloped over toward his brother. But Norm wasn't waiting for him. No, no. I saw him head up the slope of the canyon, and it looked to me like he didn't intend to stop anything. All he cared about was getting out of the way. So I dug my heels in the scar's flanks, and we rode right into the middle of the herd. If I could split them in half, only part of them would tear loose, even in a stampede. Life was in front of the herd now. Ah, ah the lead steer turned off. 
A couple of more shots. The rest of the there we are. I knew there wasn't going to be any stampede. Not now, anyway. Rife had stopped him just in time. Ah, it's nice going, Rife. Somebody had to do it. Yeah. What happened to you? Horse pulled it. Almost threw me. Yeah. Guess you were scared. The horse? That's what I said. Yeah. Well, here comes the rain. Ah, it looks like this is the tail end of it, though. Uh, probably won't be more than a shower. We better keep moving anyhow. You take over up here, Britt. Normal riding back with me. Sure. Your horse all right now? I guess so. Okay, let's go. About half an hour later, the rain let up. It was nearly sundown, and a green-yellow rainbow arched up over the hills to the east, and Rife decided to make camp for the night. Neither of the McAdams brothers said much during supper, and afterwards Norm sort of moved off a couple of yards from the campfire and started playing his mouth organ. Well, what you staring at, Rife? Huh? You heard me. I don't know what you mean. You've been watching me ever since this afternoon when my horse bolted. You've been looking at me the way you used to look when I was a kid and done something you thought was wrong. We almost had a stampede today, Norm. Almost? You was riding front, man. You was the one to stop it. I suppose you've never been on a horse that ran away with you. You was always able to handle that Palomino before. Why do you have to keep nagging? I'm no cattle man. I didn't want to come on this drive in the first place. It's our herd. It's your herd. It was up to me would have sold the ranch years ago. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. Maybe we ought to sell out. We'll talk about it when we get back home. Hold up a minute. Thought it was my turn to look after the cattle tonight. It's been a pretty hard day. You're probably tired. I'll wait till I'm you... no more tired than you are. Okay, now. I'll be over in that hill over yonder. Well, you're not serious, right, about selling out, are you? There's something in what Norm says. He's no cattleman. Well, maybe not, but you are. I can always get work somewhere. Carrie'd probably be happier in town anyway. Carrie? My wife. Oh, well, I didn't know you were married, right? Yep, last winter. She's staying with her folks in Bradley while we take the cattle north. Is that so? Carrie's a fine girl, Britt, younger than I am, about Norm's age. Young and pretty. You'll like her, everybody does. Yeah, even Norm. First time in our life him and me have ever agreed on anything or anybody. Well, she told me not to take him with us on this drive, said he'd never make it. I should have listened to her. Well, he's pretty young, Rife. This is his first cattle drive. For all we know, his horse maybe did run away with him, you know. Norm did the running, not his horse. He's no good, Britt. I guess it's my fault. I guess I bring him up wrong, but he's no good. Well, you're not his father. You're not to blame for how he turned out. I'm the only father he ever had. I... Old man died when Norm was just a baby, and Ma just lasted a couple of years after that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was 13, practically full grown when she passed on, but Norm was only four. She made me promise I'd look after him, see if he got his school and a chance to mount to something. Yeah. Fire's almost done. Oh, here, I'll fix it. I sent him to school, bought him books, but he wouldn't stick it out. It was too much like work. That's his real trouble, Britt. He's lazy, he's selfish. Expects everything to be handed to him all tied up in a fancy ribbon. Like this afternoon, he wasn't afraid of the cattle. He just couldn't be bothered stopping them. He didn't care that much. Well, maybe he's had it too easy, right? Maybe if the chips are down, he'd surprise you. Maybe. Well, I'm not making the same mistake again. Not with my own kid. With your own? What? Yeah. Carrie's expected. He might be here by now, for all I know. Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, I'll buy you a cigar and have it. Yeah, all right. Oh, well, that's fine. Well, I I guess maybe it's time to turn in, I think. I ain't very sleepy. I think I'll go up and, uh, well, see if Norm's all right. <laughs> oh, doggone it, Brady is my kid brother. Sure, I know, right? Sure. Good night. <laughs> Good night. I banked the fire for the night and... Spread out my bedroll. The moon came up, full moon. Kind of a moon you ought to have after a rain. Now I stretch out flat. Oh. Oh. Except for a couple of rocks right in the small of my back. Well, I felt about as comfortable as a man has a right to feel.
Right? No. Me. Oh. Well, I thought you were looking after the herd. Rife come nosing around. Guess he don't trust me. So if he wants to stay up all night, that's his business. Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. And we got nothing but heroes on this drive. Huh? How do you figure that? Well, you're the six shooter, ain't you? Supposed to be the fastest man with a gun west of Kansas City. East of there, too, from the way folks tell it. No, you shouldn't believe everything you hear, no harm. I don't. I don't believe you're any faster with a gun than the next man. Mm, probably not. I don't believe you're any faster than me. See that white rock over there? Well? Hmm. Well, you're good. Mm. Go ahead. It's your turn. Well, I'm afraid I'm sort of out of practice of shooting at rocks. I used to do it, but I haven't tried it recently. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I'm still a kid? I didn't mean anything. You're a good shot. Now, good night. Maybe you think it was an accident I hit it. I hit it. I can do it again. Yeah. See that? Oh. Good night. Oh. Well, it was kind of damp and cold all night, but it didn't keep me from sleeping. And when I finally woke up, the sun was just starting to shove the sky away from over my head. A couple of seconds, I couldn't quite decide whether it opened my eyes or not, but the smell of coffee made me make up my mind. Oh! Morning. Morning. Want some java? Ah, thanks. Thanks. Where's Norm? Taking a bath. Taking a, a bath? Yeah. Uh, Found a water hole on the other side of the hill. Oh. He'll be back any minute. Trust Norm to keep himself duded up. Wouldn't surprise me if he showed up wearing a clean shirt. Yeah. Why? Well, you can't blame a fellow for... Oh. Yeah, what's this? Hmm? Oh, that looks like a letter. Oh, oh, here, it's yours. Mine? Well, it says Love, Carrie. Isn't that your wife's name? Carrie? Yeah. Yeah, well, here. Read it to me, Britt. What? Out loud. Read me what it says. Well, I, I, uh, I'm not interested in somebody else's mail life. I especially love letters. Is that what it is? Well, you ought to know. It's yours, isn't it? No. No, Britt, it ain't. Carrie ain't never written me. She knows I can't read. It's Norm that had the school and remember, Brett, I told you last night. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Read me what it says. Go on, Brett, read it. We'll return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in a moment. First, a word from Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment. You'll be glad this winter you bought a Coleman heater this fall. Yes, as you sit back in your easy chair, snug and comfortable, you'll be glad you bought a Coleman heater. You'll enjoy floor-to-ceiling warmth in those rooms you could never heat before. Get your Coleman oil or gas heater now during Coleman's big bonus sale. Here's what you get. First bonus, a new low price. Yes, now you can get a dependable Coleman automatic heater at a new low price. Second bonus, a new low operating cost. Coleman saves you up to 25% on heating bills, because Coleman gives you maximum heat from your fuel. Third bonus, a 32-piece set of Libby's Safe Edge glassware worth $14. It's free with your new Coleman heater. Get three big bonuses. Get your Coleman oil or gas heater now during Coleman's big bonus sale. This sale is for a limited time only. So see your Coleman dealer tomorrow. You'll find his name and address in your telephone directory. Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. The sun was warming the back of my neck as I stood there facing life, holding that piece of lavender paper in my hand. I looked down at the letter and then up at Rife again. He was just standing there, waiting. Not moving. Not any part of him moving except the vein in his throat that jumped out in little throbs. I am waiting, Britt. Now, it's not my letter, Rife, and I guess it isn't yours. It either. concerns me, don't it? It's from Carrie. It's from my wife. Well, that's between you and her. I want to know what it says, what she's been writing to Norm about. Go ahead, Britt. Read it to him. Oh, maybe you'd rather I told you what it says, Rife. It says, Carrie loves me. 
That she'll always love me, and it goes in a detail. You rotten little... Well, here we are, Rats. You think that gun will stop me? I'll break your neck. You're walking right right into it, Rats. Now, put it away, Norm. You wanted a sample of my shooting last night. You put that gun away, and you'll get it. What am I supposed to do? Take you both on? This isn't my argument. It'll take three of us to get that herd to Abilene. I just want to be sure there'll be three of us to do it. There ain't going to be three, Britt. You think on everything for me? All your life you're thinking everything, but you're not thinking. Golly! Now, I said enough, right? Come on, now. I meant what I said about finishing that drive. Two men may not make it, and I'm going to be sure I'm not going to lose that money you promised me. Now, come on. Now, straighten up here. What's the matter with you? Are you both able to ride now? Yeah. All right. I'm able. Norm, what about you? Sure. All right, now, come on. Let's get started. I dumped out the coffee and covered up the fire while Norm got the horses. We saddled up and got the herd on the way. Norm moved out to the front, and I stayed in the middle. Right brought up the rear. I figured it'd be just as well if I stayed between them. I looked back a couple of times, and whatever I did, I saw Wright staring at Norm, watching him, watching every move he made. But he didn't say a word. All day long, he didn't say a word. And then at supper time, oh, Wright, he sat off one side, just pecking at his food. I noticed there's nothing wrong with Norm's appetite, though. Any more beans? Yeah, it looks like you finished them up, Norm. Oh? You're kind of hungry tonight, huh? Why not? Just a kid still doing my growing. At least that's what some people think. Uh-huh. Well, as long as you're so full of energy, maybe you wouldn't mind looking after the cattle, huh? Huh? Well, you missed your turn last night, didn't you? Say, you taking over this outfit, Ponce? No, 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 no. Just a suggestion. I guess somebody's got to run things. Don't look like my brother's holding a very tight rein. See you in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Come on, uh, Rive. Uh, how about some shut eye? Okay. Good night. Good night. I waited till Rive dropped off and I closed my eyes. I didn't sleep very long, though. But an hour later, something woke me up. At first, I thought it was a coyote. And then I saw Wright edging off through the brush. You going somewhere, Wright? Huh? Coyote woke you up, too, huh? Yeah. That gun ain't going to do much good if you're picking on killing it, Wright. What do you mean? It's empty, Wright. You ain't got no right to interfere. No? No? I'm just thinking about that 10% of the herd. I'm going to kill him, Bert. You can't stop me. Nobody can. He's your brother. No, no, he ain't. Not anymore. Would a brother do what he did to me? I ain't never had anything I could really call my own. If he wanted something, he took it. I never stopped him. But Carrie is my wife. She belongs to me, and this time I'm going to stop him. Oh, I think you'd better wait and talk it over with her. I waited too long already. Why do you think she didn't want Norm to go with us on this drive? It wasn't because she was afraid he'd never make it. She wanted him there with her. And at a time like this, she's... Oh, easy, easy now, right? Probably want to take over the baby, too, when it comes along. No, no, come on now. Dude. You've got to get some sleep now. You'll feel better in the morning. No, come on. Now. No, I won't feel better in the morning, Britt. I won't feel no better until... Until I'm even with him. Hey! I guess none of the three of us got much sleep that night, and... By noontime the next day, that saddle of mine was a little harder than usual. I'd been sort of keeping my eye on Rife. He was still riding behind me. But the sun was getting hot, and I was kind of drowsy, so I... I just sort of jogged along for the next few miles, not paying much attention to anything or anybody. If Scar hadn't given me a jolt, it was easy, boy. Easy, easy now. I wouldn't have looked around, and I wouldn't have seen that we were coming into a gorge. It was very narrow, barely wide enough for the herd, and the rock walls jutted up at a sharp angle, too steep for a horse to climb. By the time I got my bearings, it was too late. This was just the kind of a place wife was looking for. 
I couldn't see him now, but I knew he was doing the firing, and I knew why. He was trying to stampede the cattle. And there in the gorge, Norm wouldn't be able to get out of the way. There was no chance of getting back to stop life. All I could do was jam right into the middle of the herd. Come on, boy. Now, come on. Come on. Come on. Smart on his way past a couple of steers. I tried to keep them under control, but the ones in the rear started pressing forward in earnest, and I... There just wasn't no holding the rest of them. And we was right in it now, a real stampede. This was Wright's way of killing his brother, and I wasn't so sure I was going to fare any better than Norm. A couple of the cows shoved against us, almost toppled us over. Scar was pretty certain to lose his footing before we could get much further, and I, I jerked out my gun. I cleared us a little path, but the cattle plugged up before we get through. All of my shooting was just making things worse. There was nothing to do now but just give Squire's head, let him, let him run with him. I hadn't had time to worry about Norm. I didn't know what had happened to him. I didn't even think about him until it... Hey, that, that wasn't right firing. That wasn't right firing. That was from up ahead. Well, the, the herd was half crazy now. They'd been shot at from all directions. They didn't know where to turn now. I rose up in my stirrups and looked forward. Norm... Norm was holding his ground at the mouth of the gorge. He could have gotten away, all right, but he... He was holding his ground. I hadn't lifted myself up. Maybe I... I would have been able to hang on when the cattle twisted around and started changing direction. As it was, I... So I held his ground. Flattened out behind a rock. That was the only thing that saved my neck. I rolled under him. The cattle had just swung around and started heading back to the water. in the clear. The cattle passed me by. I, I pulled myself up. Up to my feet and I looked around. The herd was still out of control. They're charging out the other end of the gorge. But, and then I... Then I got a flash of right. Ah! Norm, Norm Munch must have heard it too. Right! Right! Norm came pounding past me, firing at all the way. like a crazy man. I heard it moved on almost out of sight now before I saw Rife again. He was lying on the ground in a smear of sticky red dust, and Norm was there bending over him when I got up to him. You... You all right, Rife? I started him, Norm. I figured you'd try to get out of the way, but he didn't run. You you stopped him. He stopped him, didn't he, Britt? Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean for him to turn on you, Rife. I, I swear I didn't. I know that. I know that. <laughs> I, I saw you trying to get through to me. Why did you want to help me, Norm? I started them so they'd kill you. Why did you want to help me? You're my brother. You're all I've got, all I've ever had. You hear that, Brent? You don't hate me. Right. Listen. About Carrie. About that letter. I, it's all right, Norm. I, I don't blame you. I, I don't blame Carrie. But she loves you, right? That letter was written a long time ago, before you and her were married, before she even knew you. A long, a long time ago? Yeah, I've carried it with me ever since. I was in love with her, but she wasn't in love with me. Not ever. And when you come along, she realized that she, she's never had anything to do with me since. I only kept the letter so that I could show it to you and you got to writing me the way you did yesterday. You, you're telling the truth. You know I am, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. Sure. I guess I've known it all along. When Carrie told me about us having a baby, I, I was so happy and proud it almost spilled over. <laughs> I guess a man couldn't feel that way if he wasn't sure of his wife. <laughs> take it easy. Take it easy, right now. Don't try talking too much. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Britt? You think them cattle finished? No, no, of course not. You no. said it would take all three of us to get to Abilene. That's the way it's going to be. All three of us. Sure. You and Norm and me. it be a while before I can get on my legs, but you just give me a couple of hours rest while you're rounding up the herd. A couple of hours and I'll be around to... 
Bleif. Bleif. He's dead, Norm. But, but it can't be. He was feeling better. You heard him. Well, a man don't always know when he's dying, Norm. Sometimes a man's lucky. I... Britt? Britt, I think. Yeah. It's only... Only kids that cry, ain't it? I guess... I guess this makes me a kid. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, Norm. I'd say you've done a lot of growing up today. We buried Rice there at the mouth of the gorge and went off to round up the cattle again. We managed to find most of them, and about a week later, we hit Abilene. All during that week, I kept wanting to ask Norman about that letter from Carrie, if it was true what he told Rice, if it really had been written a couple of years ago. But somehow, I, I don't know, the subject never came up. At least I never found a good time for bringing it up. Besides, it really it wasn't any of my business. Beginning tomorrow night, Fibber McGee and Molly return to the air in a new series of programs. Yes, beginning tomorrow night, you'll hear those wonderful folks from 79 Wistful Vista, Fibber McGee and Molly, every night, Monday through Friday on NBC. As a matter of fact, this is the week that we'll see 28 new programs beginning on the NBC Radio Network. And you'll find that an evening with NBC Radio is an evening sure to entertain. So make a date to keep your dial set where you hear the familiar NBC chimes. Your invitation to the best in radio programming.